Hello and welcome back to music history at educator.com. I'm getting nostalgic today. This is our final lesson together. Um, unless you watch things out of order or come back and watch them in different sections and you know, in which case this is not our last lesson together. So hey, well for the last one we're talking about the later 20th century, which encompasses obviously a whole lot of time, but just to give you a sense of what else kind of happened, uh, you know, mid-century on, and then give you a sense of what could happen in the future. So, all right, we just talked about Dixieland, blues, and jazz, but wait, there's still classical music. It continues! Yay! We last talked about it with uh, The Rite of Spring, um, which was 1913. But um, it's really impossible to talk about all the other composers and works in the 20th century. Um, we have a lot more isms that sort of come into fruition, but mainly what you begin to see is uh, you definitely get more landmark composers, but more larger works, like very monumental works, than major composers. And that seems to be what's happening in classical music as compared to like Beethoven and Mozart, who, who was they were the major player and anything they wrote was then a major work. Now we have people who sort of like have written some pretty awesome works. Not to say their other stuff isn't awesome, but that's just based on our performance system. So anyway, I got to pick this stuff. So I picked a couple special um, people, at least that I really like to talk about. And of course, we're very important in classical music history. Um, so, John Cage and Steve Reich. So John Cage was with Eleatory. And Eleatory is um, really chance music, music of chance or things that were left up to um, kind of your own, your own choices, if you will, while you played. And it was based on uh, the I Ching, which is a Far Eastern philosophy, and it was a, a system of, of chance, rolling dice and making decisions based on that. And what's curious about Cage is if you remember uh, you know, the whole serialism school, where they basically composers came to want to control every single music parameter, every single musical decision. Well, Cage takes the opposite approach and leaves everything open to chance. What's kind of you know ironic and funny about it is there's a piece by Cage and a piece by Boulez. Um, Cage's is the you know chance and Boulez is completely controlled and they sound almost identical. Anyway, Cage is really a philosopher um, in addition to a composer and has influenced scores of uh, artists, musicians, thinkers, writers, uh, rock musicians. Um, he wrote a famous piece called Four Minutes 33 Seconds, which is the famous silent piece. And it's supposed to turn your ears into a different direction. So it restructures the ear. So the piece, the piano player, it's written for piano, they sit there for four minutes 33 seconds and don't actually play anything on the instrument. But the piece is actually about the environmental sounds. So you start listening very critically around you. You hear like the person unwrapping the a candy wrapper, right? Or someone coughing or, well, maybe now you hear like cell phones buzzing or something like that. So you begin to hear things in a different way. And Cage was all about you hearing things in different ways. That's exactly what he wanted. He also wrote um, a lot of um, works for prepared piano, which is where you would take the go inside the piano on the strings and you would put things like paper clips or other objects on there, which created new sounds. And that's really what he was all about. Redefining the ear, new sounds. So uh, the second composer I chose was Steve Reich and minimalism, one of the isms, if you will. And minimalism is really, it's a system of repeated cells that change over time. This is where you repeat something, you just keep it going, say it's it's not a very long passage. I mean, it could be, I, I'm just gonna make something up, ready? 
So that's my cell. And you change it over time. But you don't change it like bar by bar. You change it over the span of a long period of time. So these changes happen very gradually. And once again, your ear has to hear things very differently because you don't get that immediate impact of change that we normally get or normally associate with music. We have a measure, then we go to a new measure, and then a new measure, a new musical material, a new musical material. Well, not anymore. In minimalism, it takes a long time time and some of Reich's works go on for 90 plus minutes and there's not a whole lot of change there you have to listen and you have to sort of you, you begin to feel things differently and hear things differently there's a cool example on YouTube of clapping music which is a piece he wrote for two people clapping and it just takes a cellular pattern And two people play that, but then one person goes off by one of those notes. And so it goes all the way around till they reach back home. And so click pause, listen to that, and then come back. All right, so I hope you enjoyed clappy music. It's, it's kind of groovy. It's kind of cool. And Reich's stuff is definitely very groovy. Um, he spent some time researching in West African drumming. And he, his stuff is, is definitely very percussive very rhythmically based and very metric and so I chose John Cage I chose Steve Reich you could easily have chosen 800 other people um, but it's just to show you that the 20th century has since become a way of hearing differently about approaching sounds differently creating new soundscapes and listening differently